Hi everybody, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back. This is part five now of the build of this beautiful ICM Sikorsky CH54A Tarhi. And uh, what a lovely kid it is. So, when I left you last time, if you remember, we'd gone around and we'd done all these joints here. If you actually watch the video, um, all we've done is fitted all these panels and I went through all the sort of detailed nitty gritty about fitting them and stuff. So I did advise if you haven't got the kit and you're not, you know, you're not intending to get one, probably just give it a miss because it'll probably boil you to tears. But anyway, um, what we've done now, we've gone around and we've done all these joints here and they're all looking lovely, as you can see. Um, they all look pretty seam free. Uh, I've also gone round and sanded these out and given them a coat of primer and then done any little touch ups all around the bottom here. If you remember, there's a big seam across there, and it's all looking pretty good. I have actually mistakenly removed some rivet detail here. You can see there's some rivet detail been removed, so I need to. Um, I've ordered some HGW positive rivets. If you remember, I used these here. And they're called free lines, the ones in the floor. And you can't really feel them, to be honest. So they're not really pronounced enough. But now they do something called positive rivets. And I don't know if they're the same, but I've actually had to order them from the Czech Republic because there was none in stock I could find over here. So we'll see. But they look to be the correct size and pitch for that area there. So I can replace them. If not, we'll just have to do without. But um, I'm going to replace... There's rivets going over here as well, which which run over across the fuselage and obviously sanding in between those is a nightmare so I ended up just sanding them off and sort of trying to get a straight line um, it's easier said than done it's not at all easy getting that there lovely uh, I, in hindsight when I build another one I will be a lot more careful with that joint um, you know I was pretty careful with it and got it pretty nice but when you start getting primer on there and stuff you can see it and uh, maybe on the next one, maybe I would try Mr. Surfacer on a cotton bud to, re to avoid removing any of this rivet detail. Um, I've gone round here, Mr. Surfacer on a cotton bud, all around these square corners and over the top there. So you can see it gives you a, a lovely join and just basically fills in the cracks, if you like. But we have now got a very, very strong, very, very rigid fuselage. I can't twist that at all. I can't flex it. It's very, very strong. So, um... Happy with that. Um, this could have been better, but, you know, I'm probably just being a perfectionist. It's probably absolutely fine. But we shall see when those rivets arrive, we can do something with it. So we're going to have to press on with the build. Now, as you know, I've done a few changes to the build sequence, as I normally do. And I've tried to explain it as well as I possibly can. Um, but I think the next thing we should think about doing is getting this, this piece here, which is the roof, which is part... Do, 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 do is way back here part a7 get that fitted onto here and then we can get the cockpit mated up to here get it all taped and clamped whatever in place and then we can start looking at fitting these panels on here then if you remember i left this panel off the back because basically when this goes in here and all this lines up up top up there then that panel is going to butt up against here. So I wanted to make sure we didn't get any gaps or interference or whatever. So that's why I've done a slight change. So we're going to get that done. And then um, I'll get that glued on. And then we'll come back and see how it looks when it's all clamped up and dried and everything. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the model sat here. And you're probably wondering what on earth I'm doing. I'll tell you in a minute. The I haven't glued the front on. I don't want to glue the front on yet. Um, I've actually done this this piece in here where I fitted this inner panel and I've put some plastic tabs behind there I'll show you in a minute when I take this off I don't want to take it off just to show you at the moment but I will show you in a minute what I've done to sort of strengthen up that area um, what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the if you remember I spoke in part one about the possibility of it being a tail sitter and I don't think that's going to happen I mean the, the biggest part that's going in the back is the um stabilator i think it's called somebody told me i can't remember i think it was Rand. was it randy that told me it's called a stabilator so when the stabilator goes on you can see i've got the i've got this basically sat on a tub of cocktail sticks or toothpicks and you can see that brings it up now there's no way it's going to be a tail sitter with that on there now i mean you've got to remember we've got to add this we've got 
here I am unprepared as usual. We've got all our clear parts going on. So you can see, even with that on there, you know, I know we're looking at sprues as well. If I, if I put that on there like that, that will stay. We can see that we have it sitting on its nose. And when you consider the engines, the intakes, the rotor head, all that is forward of the main gear. And all we've got going on the back of here in addition to that is a few greeblies along here and the actual main tail rotors. So I, I'm sure we're going to be OK. If we're not, it's going to be a case of drilling a hole somewhere and putting some weight in. Um, but uh, we could probably draw some holes here under the engine and put something in there with some glue. Um, I'm sure we can sort of we can put, drill a hole underneath and then fill it or whatever. But um, I, would, I would rather have found out now because if it was definitely going to be a tail sitter, I can easily put some weights in here before I glue this piece on. So <clears throat> I spoke about um, I spoke about fitting this piece earlier on. <clears throat> earlier on, I think it was in part one, um, maybe in part two. I'm not fitting in the instructions. Let's go back to the instruction manual. Let's make the camera go dark. In the instructions, they suggest that you fit all this, this clear part and everything, and this clear parts here, before you fit that. Well, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat again. My problem with fitting that without having it up here is you have no idea. There's no tab or anything that controls its vertical position. The only thing you have is that hole there, like I'm pointing at, that goes onto that end of the railing there this is becoming unwieldy now you've got that railing there you can see on the end of it in that silhouette you can see the little and that sits on there so basically with all this in place we can offer this up okay and that's going to basically butt up to that roof okay so that's going to butt up to the roof it sort of sits inside that side there but as i say there's no lip or anything for it to sit up against it's literally like all of this it's just a, it's just butting up so that's going to sit like that so we've got to actually get this glued in and get it all nice and flush and then sort that joint out down the back there um down here and this one on the corner here and we can also see that with it in that position you can see that i've got to spring the bottom to keep it to get it in so if you fit this part before you fit the top you may find you won't get the top in so I'm glad I've done this because now I know that I can glue this in so I can glue it down the side around there and here let that go off and then take this away from this main fuselage section and then work on these seams separately and then we can get all of this glued on probably get the glue clear parts glued on here as well and then go for it. In fact, I can't put the clear part on the front because it needs this upper roof section glued on. I could glue that on now, but obviously I want to be able to get down inside there. Um, if I show you here with the tape, you can see down in here we've got we can get in there and get a lot of glue in there and get a nice strong joint because obviously you don't want the front cracking off, do you? So uh, don't crack him one off. <laughs> so um. As you can see, without that clamp on there, it's all sort of, well, you didn't see, I've, I've got a clamp holding it all together, which you, which you haven't seen. But um, I took that off to do the weight distribution thing. And what I can show you now is what I did. Let's use a cocktail stick rather than risk damaging. In here. Come on. In here, you can see where I glued this panel this panel here, I glued it to this main assembly. You can see I've put two squares of plastic card in there. What I found was, because it, again, it's just a butt joint, okay? I didn't want it all flapping around like this, and I did actually find I had a bit of misalignment in them. So I put, put some tabs on there, clamped them all down, and then let them dry, and then put some more cement on afterwards. Be careful doing that, because you don't want the cement to kip capillary out onto your clamps. So, um. There we go. And if I didn't mention before, in fact, I don't think I mentioned before, I've also put some tabs in here. You can see some tabs in there. There's one in there and there's one in there. And they are actually, again, 
because this plastic is slightly thinner than this plastic I've put a tab and then I've put a piece of tentho card and then sort of shaved it so it gets a nice perfectly flat join but otherwise again that's just a bud joint a butt joint not a bud joint not a budweiser so um there we go but all in all we can see that we are getting what looks very much like a sky crane and it's looking very very nice indeed so what I'm going to do now is get that I'm going to get this clamp back in position again and then I'm going to get that panel glued in I don't know if I'll film it or not we shall see but um we shall see when we get there just one other thing quickly guys you can see I've got this all clamped up here just one other thing up here there is a little protrusion sticking up um and it catches on everything because it's getting so big now it catches with that little protrusion catches on everything so I've put uh, two pieces of tape that way and then one piece of tape that way so if it catches anything it's kind of smooth and won't snap it off I hope but um, it is pretty it, it's softish plastic it's on the softer side of the plastics we use it's not like the old Airfix blue tack that I call it the, the very light grey blue tack um, plastic the blue tack colour um, it's not it's not like that but it's it's not very far away from it it's absolutely gorgeous stuff I love it I, I really really like it I actually found one sink mark there there is a very very shallow sink mark there and there which we'll get away with because it's pa paneling imagine if this was all um, textured like the Lancaster is that would be lovely so I'm gonna look at getting this panel fitted now and uh, and then I'll see you when I'm back okay so I've got this panel as you can see taped in place here and here and it sort of pretty much lines up as soon as you tape it it kind of lines up automatically really well now I've got the clear part out and just fitting that and there is a slight mismatch here on the bottom there's a bit of a step um, and it's also like it's just slightly too straight I've got a bit of a step here so I think what I might do is when we come to fit the clear part is put a piece of plastic shim down the side I could shim this here and move this panel over but that'll affect up here as well so I don't really want to get into that um, but I think it's slightly high there or low should I say so we might be able to clamp that down and glue it or remove some plastic from this end and then here I think what I'll do is shim it out and then push the edges in to get it to light up lovely there it could be I don't want to scratch this it could be that the shrinkage on the clear part is slightly different to the to the um to the gray plastic um, another thing worth looking at here if you remember when i took my parts out of the bag this literally touched the uh, adhesive strip on the bag and pulled it off the sprue and it left a mark in it so that's one of the issues when you break clear parts off the sprue you get that white spidery going into there so that's not going to look amazing but hopefully we'll get around that but um yeah you can see the, the curvature along here along this part doesn't match the curvature along here it's it's okay there and there but it's not quite right here so I mean I may be able to push that panel in but um I do want to get a good fit there because it's it's at a very obvious area where a lot of people would look if this model was in a show a lot of people would look there because it's such an area where everyone wants to look inside but um yeah we can see here I need to pull this panel out a bit here get it flush but if I put this down on here put it into that corner I can see that it needs to be it needs to come out slightly it's like the whole thing is slightly flattened to be honest um, that won't be a problem that'll be fine see I've got that fitting lovely now I've got that I've pushed in this corner I've pushed in and I'm pushing this corner in and it's making it fit absolutely lovely so we'll have to fit it a bit at a time unfortunately we can't put that black super glue on there any super glue on there because it'll probably fog it up but anyway um, I'm going to look at getting that panel glued in now so I'm happy that the clear part fits nicely so we'll put that back in its bag with the sprue to avoid it getting scratched. Oh, good. 
go in there. There we go. Right. And then that can be folded over and glued down. We can keep that to one side. I did it the wrong way around. Right, so I'm going to get this fitted now. So what I'm going to do, I think, is tack it in with the little drops of super glue first, and then position it and get the welding action glue in there. And there we go, guys. That's that panel is now glued in. It's glued in there, solid with the weld action, the Tammy Extra Thin. It's all round. It's been glued in with the Tammy Extra Thin, and I've gone over with the black thin VMS as a filler again, so we don't get this shrinking. I've just been looking at some images on Prime Portal and it looks like there's a row of rivets down here so I may well do that with my um, micro scale rivets and actually put some rivets in there. They only go from here to here, they don't go down the bottom. This here is like a pressed aluminium pan so that's going to be all smoothed out and it looks like it's a fairly sharp radius. There is a radius there but it's fairly sharp, like a 6mm radius or something. It's, um, it's not very uh, rounded at all so be careful with that one. So that's all glued in there. We've got wild action and the black stuff in there. Let that all dry and then we can um, get into take this off and then get that joint sorted with it off the, the main fuselage. I would like to do as much as I can without having this attached because it is becoming very unwieldy and we've got lots and lots of stuff to go on here. Um, when we look in the instructions, I mean, I don't want to bore you with this, but you know, we've got all the tail, um, we've got all the tail, we've got the landing gear to sort out so we can get those sponsons done, get those on before we fit the cockpit. Then we've got all this pipe work here, which doesn't become, although it'd be a pain having that there, wouldn't it? We're going to clamp the fuselage in place, uh, but we can do all the tail wheel. Um, we can do all that and then these little bits and pieces. Got the drive shaft going in there and then we've got some pieces going on here which could all go on uh we can't fit any of that but what we could do is basically look through and see what we can actually fit i mean we could, we could get on with the main rotor head as well and do all that before we fit that cockpit and that's going to make it a lot easier to have it on the bench sat on my black of block of aluminium get all that done uh, before we have the cockpit because it's it's really it's not so much its size it's its awkward shape you've basically got this this long slender fuselage with this great lump hanging off the front and this great tail on the back. So um, I think I'd like to get as much of this done as I can without having that on there. So we shall see where we go. I'm sorry, I know, I know you like to see me follow the instructions um, page by page. But sometimes what I like to do is find an easier, more suitable, safer way of building things. So um, anyway... I'll be back when I decide where we go next. Right, so we've got the parts off the sprue. So we've got C, C17 here. Make sure the all the features go outwards because I think these parts, no, you can't. I thought you'd be able to fit them wrong. The other thing is they don't go down in that little step down in there. They're sitting up on there like that. So you're going to end up with a seam line down the side, as you can see there. Let me get the light a bit better for you. You're going to end up with a seam line down there like that okay so we'll probably deal with that because I'm not sure that that should be there um, but that'll be easy Mr. Surfacer to wipe off the cotton bud job that one so we're going to hold this in position it's not very easy to hold in position and glue and, and make sure you don't get it up your fingers as well so I'm just going to put some cement there and hopefully that'll bite Enough to just hold it in place and then I can run some down there. Obviously this needs to be fairly rigid because it's going to be supporting the weight of the helicopter. And I think we need to work with a bit of speed here because we basically don't want to be um, we don't want to be letting all this set because if we let it set it will cause issues down the line. So there you can see we've got that ledge is carrying on around. So this, that step in there, where what I've got on the fingernail is that step in there, that is not where the panel goes. The panel goes into the next step over. So where I'm putting the cement now, I'm going to put some cement in here. That's where the 
vertical panel goes in there like so okay and then we'll get some cement into the bottom because that is actually that is where the plate goes that holds the undercarriage leg so all of the weight will be on that plate hey all of the weight will be on that plate do, 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 do. i'm a poet uh right so that's going to go in there and then this one's going to go in here This one is C1. Oops. As you can see, it's quite awkward to build this. Right, we've got an ejector pin mark there, that's for the problem. We've got an ejector pin mark right there, which is raised. So that needs to go. Goodbye. Go, that's better. It is actually quite awkward to assemble this. Put some glue down there, and hopefully, that will be enough to hold it. I don't want to glue the top and get it on my fingers because it will capillary out. There we are. So that's that's all done. I think we'll just do some clean up afterwards. Get some cement into there. I think we'll do a clean up afterwards, put some Mr. Surfacer in there, make sure we've got it nice and um nice and seam free. There we are. It may actually be easier to build that with Revell Contact, uh, the, the, the needle one. Just trying to make sure everything's all pushed in nicely. And then this is the top, and that's just going to drop on there, like so. And as we thought it would be, it's a beautiful fit. So that panel there on the end, H. F, sorry, F50 is trying to pull its way off. So we're going to get some cement in there. Let's get some cement down there. Naturally wants to slide off because of its shape. So we're going to push it back in. Make sure we've got a good, solid assembly. As I say, that plate is what's taking the whole weight of the, well, the main undercarriage goes onto that plate, so. And then that's going to go on the top there. And then this will in turn, I'm not going to glue the top on yet because I'm going to back it up with some sprue glue, I think. And then this will slide, it's the other side, isn't it? That will slide over there for a lovely fit. There you go. So we can see on there, I've got it's just holding it away. We just got a bit of a gap. So I'm thinking what we'll do is sand. Sand the end of this leg a bit. Sand the end of this leg a bit so that it can go back a bit further. Maybe then it will fit perfectly. But um, one other thing to note, guys, when you look at this, <clears throat> when you look at these, these are steps here. These are steps for a person to walk up. You look at them, you may think they're holes, and you might start drilling them out. 
they're not they're actually oval pressings in the sheet metal there are a couple of holes on the corners which aren't molded in but um they are not holes so don't drill them out so that's going to slide in there like that yeah we need to take a little bit of meat off the end of this leg so it can slide up a bit further we'll do a bit of test fitting and see how it goes but so we can get a nice strong joint there so there we are that's that one built up and as i say i'm going to leave leave the top off because i think i'm going to put some sprue goo in here and give it a good old strengthen up um and make sure everything is nice and glued up so i'm going to get the other side done and then i'll come back and we'll go from there okay half an hour has gone by and i've built the other one up i clamped this end because they were just sort of trying to just pull away so obviously because of that you can see we've got oozage so we've got some glue oozing out there so we'll just have to scrape that away or cut it away or whatever but i will make sure i clean those up before i physically glue these on because it'll be a lot easier to do on here than it will when it's all glued to that leviathan over there so uh there we go i think i will also deal with these seams while it's while they're off one thing i want to do is get them to fit so i've done this side uh which is which is this one and basically what i've done is sanded some plastic off the end now as we can see i'll show you i haven't done this side so i can show you what i'm doing so i'll take this clamp off there we go and when I slide this in place without the top on, I've, I've got a shirt on, I mean the top of this, not me. You can see we have a gap. I think you can see down the bottom there, I can see light through there. I don't know if you can or not, but there is actually a gap. It's not contacting, it'd be best to do it upside down actually. It's not physically contacting the bottom of the fuselage, you can see there's a gap there. So what I've discovered is it's actually butting up on the end and it could be that this corner is a little sharp down here. So what I'm going to do is support the model. I've actually got it resting on my belly, which is a very, very large, comfortable resting place to be. And then I'm just going to, using this fairly coarse Infini Zebra stick, basically put a radius on the bottom get rid of that sharp corner and then we'll just clean that with a little 400 grit mat matador and there we go so that should be enough so now I can put this on here let's do it upside down again so that you guys can see what's going on I should be able to slide that on there into its groove and you can see now we do still have a very very slight gap so i need to take some more off of there obviously being very conscious to support this because i don't want to crack it anything. although this plastic is so nice i don't think we'll, we'll crack anything There we go so now you can see it goes on there nicely okay and we've got no gap there's no gap there now so then i can turn this over the fact there is a tidy gap there needs to need a little bit more sanding off but you don't need to watch me sanding it off do you but you can see now we've got that that there is a slight gap at the end and we've got the bottom buttered up nicely that's okay so there's a slight gap at the end i don't mind i think what was happening it was being held off on these tabs and because i was doing it and upside down so that you guys could see what i was doing i've missed that so um yeah with it all in there nicely now yeah there's definitely no gap there so that's good now what i'm going to do is once again try and change the build sequence what i want to do is put these on here with a rubber band or whatever and then glue these on at the bottom and then once they're on and dry take the tops off and then not me the model and then and then get some sprue glue in there to really strengthen this joint get some around there get some on that big main spar because you know if if these are only glued lightly there okay and they're glued on the bottom 
if we knock this suspension the undercarriage it's going to crack it's going to crack away from there it's going to crack away from there because you're not going to get a solid joint so what i want to do is get a nice solid joint in here so that we've got solid there and there and then across the bottom so that when we actually knock it it can take quite a substantial knock without damaging it as i say it's a big old bird i must have knocked this tail 20 times already and i've only just put the nose on so you know um we need to be a little bit sort of thoughtful about how we're doing this i may even put some plastic strip in there to strengthen it so we don't get cracking right so what i've got to do now is deal with these seams and before i do those seams i want the glue to dry so i'm going to put these back under a clamping situation there we go so that's that clamped in place and that one's already clamped in place so we can get those there drying and then deal with that seam and i'll probably deal with the seam with mr surfacer to be honest and then um and then just go with the cotton bud may do a bit of scraping to get rid of this, like a little step you can see there's a step on that one so i'll probably just go in there and just scrape some of that, what the other ones like yeah that one has a very small step and that one's flush so there's a step on this side flush on the other side but uh that's going to be fine i think what i'll do is get some sprue glue in there while that's curing and then um, and then we'll have a nice strong joint i love to use sprue glue to back things up because basically the glue element of the sprue glue sort of penetrates the joint pulls the styrene in with it and it sort of melds itself it's not just like a buttress of super glue which is you know if you've got a right angle like this and you put super glue in here you've got a buttress which is stuck to that and stuck to that with sprue goo you've got a buttress which is welded to that and welded to that so that's the thing right so i will see you tomorrow but in a few seconds okay here we are back next morning so um this panel is now glued in and i've gone around with the black vms super glue and dealt with all the seams so that's all done now ready to sand out i should do that off camera and then i think i might add some riveting down there we shall see uh, also got to deal with that corner there not fitting any clear parts yet because as you know i've got the art scale kit set on the way um these are all glued together these covers for the well they're actually part of the structure for the um, main undercarriage legs and as you can see i've put sprue glue around the inside and that gives them a nice bit of strength i've also gone around and scraped away those steps where those seams are uh, we've got a similar thing here just to give you an idea if you can't remember you can see here that as this is assembled you can see there is a step there okay so all i've done is just gone in with a with a number 11a is it a 10 or a 10 uh, sorry number 10 blade and just scraped along to remove that step and then brushed over with a bit of tamiya extra thin and you can see it gets rid of all those marks not being too fussy about it because as you know we've got covers that go on here they are optional they are sort of temper they're, they're bolted on inspection covers if you like and they kind of fit um hold this together and fit it on oh come on this is because the camera's on this always does this to me i've just done this i was gonna say a million times but it's probably about six times that's gonna go on there like so and cover up all the pipe work and everything that's in there as you can see so you know, you're not going to see in there anyway if you're going to add them if you're going to leave them off then it all needs to be nice but those steps didn't look very good so um anyway so what we're going to do now i've got these as you can see there's one here i haven't glued the top on the top is loose and i've done that for a reason so what i'm going to do now is fit this onto here okay so we get the we've got like a groove there's a groove up inside there you can see on the right hand side Let's get this other light on for you make things a bit better there's a groove here on the right hand side you can see that that is gonna slide up into just like so and then it's gonna fit onto there beautifully just like that so what we can do is actually get some glue you notice i've taken the nose off this as well which makes it all a bit more easy to handle which is what we were talking about earlier um so that's going to slide on there so what i'm going to do is get some plastic cement into the groove 
Now I'm not going to put it on the part as such because my fear is if you put the glue on the part, always remember this, this is a general tip, if I put the glue on there what will happen as I slide this on it will push the glue out and I get a load of mess around here. So if you put the glue in the groove as far as you can I think probably the best thing to do here Mm, this is going to be. I think what I'll do is put some glue on the on the on this on the bottom. But here, I'm going to put some glue in there. And I'm going to let some run down in there. There we go. That's running down that groove beautifully, actually. Just let that run down in there, and then we can slide this in. There we go. That slid into there, and just let that sit there and glue itself on. And as you can see, because I put the glue on the part, we've got nothing oozing out here. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And then once again, guess what? We're going to leave it to dry. Yay! Okay, so here we are back a couple of hours later. I've been doing a bit of resin casting for Chris and Sue. So that's all good. Right, so... Get these rubber bands off a bit gently. I don't want to go ripping these legs off. There's that one, and then this one. There we go, that's them off. Let's get our rubber bands out of the way. So, that's all nice and solid. So what we can do now is get some sprue glue in there. Before I do that, I'm going to get some Tamiya Extra Thin. Get that in there as well. Down in there and get that glued solidly onto that leg. And also, if you are if you are putting sprue glue in for strength, like I am, if you put some extra thin in there first, it sort of gives the sprue glue something to run into, almost like a primer, if you like. Um, so now I want to somehow. Push these in because I want to get some glue down in that joint there, but I don't want it to move and ooze out. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. Let me have a think about it and I'll come back. So to ensure these vertical members are tight up against the fuselage, I've put a rubber band around here. And to make sure the front stays tight, I've just got these rubber bands here, which aren't putting very much force on at all. But I'm just making sure it stays forward so this one at the front stays in contact. So now I can get some extra thin in there. And for those of you thinking, oh, here he goes, engineering it, over-engineering it again. I guess you could be right. Um, you could just glue it all together. But for those of you out there that enjoy the way I do things, there we go. But also, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that I have a good, solid joint everywhere. Because at the end of the day, this is a big old beast, and I really don't want it to be cracking all over the place, if you know what I mean. Just put some tension in that belt. Oops, I pulled that one off of there now. Right. And another couple of hours later, that's all I seem to do lately, is wait for things to dry and come back after a couple of hours. As you can see, we've got the sprue glue in there all the way around now, and in down the back. And uh, all nice and solid. I've just, you can see a bit of powderiness in there. I've gone round, I haven't put this light on, have I? I've gone round and um, cut away some of the sprue glue there just to make room for these upper panels that go on. But uh, I've had a quick uh, dry fit of those and they still fit beautifully, so that's all good. Um, so I'm going to wait for this to, to fully cure now overnight, give it sort of 18 hours, 12 hours, and then we'll put the top on. What I'm worried about is locking the solvents in. I don't know if it's going to matter or not. Maybe I could drill a hole through the side there. Um, in fact, I might do that because I'm sort of worried about having all that solvent gas in there that can't escape because all the seams are sealed. I um, wonder if it would affect it over time. You just don't know any of these things. It's, it's weird, isn't it? It's like our some models, the resin tyres just collapse, don't they? Not resin, the uh, vinyl tyres just disintegrate over time. And yet I've got, down in the cupboard downstairs, I've got a... Um, a Trumpeter 132nd AV8B, which has been there since 2000 and... 
2010, so 13 years now, and it's absolutely fine on its vinyl tyres. So it's it's very strange. But anyway, enough uh, gas bagging. So there we are. That's that all done. Um, as I say, I'm going to wait for that to dry. I think I'll we'll draw some holes in there to allow the gases to escape because there's gaps around where it can get through. But um, basically, really happy with how this is coming out. And as I say, do you need to do this? Probably not. Um, but I want to do it. And it just adds rigidity in this area. When you've got these pieces going on and everything is like end to end, nothing is, nothing is flanged, nothing is pinned, everything is just end to end, um, you know, butt jointed, just that plastic glue down there, I don't trust it, um, especially in an area. And the thing is, I'm knocking this about all over the place while I'm building it. So I wanted to get it nice and strong and I've achieved it. So there we go. You do you have to do it on yours? Not if you don't want to, but I would advise doing something, put some plastic card in there or something just to back it up. Anyway, uh, we'll call it a day for now, not for this video, but I'm going to call it a day for now and come back and work on it tomorrow. But that'll be a few seconds for you. As some of you will be glad to know, I think I'm going to do some work on the Lancaster now. Right, next day now. And yes, I put this down last night and here are some Lancaster parts. In the box as you can see and boy oh boy I wish I hadn't picked that up fitting those clear parts to that mid upper turret wow they don't fit at all so <laughs> I'm having some fun with that but you'll see that in a forthcoming video when I'm brave enough to pick it up again um, so we can get this rubber band off of here there we go so we can carefully remove this. Right, that's that done and had a coffin fit as well. Okay, so uh, we're good to go now. So we can fit these panels. Um, just make sure there's no uh, sprue goo residue or anything, keeping anything away from its mounting face. Just like so. And then we can get these on. As we can see, we've got some sprue goo there. Just going to remove. I mean, it will obviously disappear as soon as the extra thing goes on anyway. I want to be careful not to damage any rivet detail. There we go. So. There we are, that fits on there beautifully. So what we can do, we can dry fit that and we can see that it fits lovely. Now I've got some sprue goo on there by the look of it. <clears throat> Why is it whenever I put the camera on, I get a frog in my throat, I start to cough. Why is it? I could sit here and talk on the phone all day long and not have an issue and as soon as I put the camera on my voice goes maybe I talk too much just going to remove some plastic from the top of there because for some reason this isn't going down properly at the end see we've got a gap there so I can only assume there's some sprue goo in there, which isn't helping. So we can get rid of that. So there we go. So that's all good to go now. So what we can do is get, we'll be able to clamp this with a close peg on the end. That's good. I'm not sure if we'll get a close peg on there. Oh yes, we can. We can also get a close peg in the middle. And then we can do the same on that side. So um, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> is get three more clothes pegs out
buried under other stuff, under other, other clamps. <clears throat> so <clears throat> here we go, I'm a bloody frog in my throat. So I'm going to get some glue on here. Just to make sure I've got a nice solid joint in there. <coughs> Excuse my voice, guys, I'm really sorry. So now we can peg that down. So one there, one there, one there. One there and one there, and as you can see, that's clamped down beautifully. So, what I can do now is take the pegs off one by one, get my extra thin over here, get that out of the way so you don't drip any extra thin on it, and then I can get some glue into that joint, get plenty in there. So we get a nice strong welded joint and then I can put the peg back on and then take that one off and do the same. As I say, as I've already mentioned, I believe in this video, don't worry too much about this all being really neat and tidy because at the end of the day, we're going to be putting covers over all this anyway. We've got some beautiful pipe detail going on here, which we're going to cover up, which is a shame. Plenty of cement into that joint there. And there's rivet detail on that end plate and I'm kind of thinking we might have to lose that and replace it because there's, we've got the main, the main undercarriage legs going on there. And it's not particularly flat. Get in there. Get some cement into that joint. Let it capillary in. And there we go. And then the drop over the top. Get some in there. And then a drop of Mr. Surfacer and we'll be all sorted for a lovely, perfect seam. And there we go. That's that side done. So I will go and get the other side done. And then guess what? We're going to leave it to dry. Right, so that's all pretty much dry now. I noticed I did have a, a bit of a dry area here, so I've got some more cement into there. In fact, I'm going to put another drop in the end here because we do want these end plates to be nice and firm because they're going to take all the weight. I'm not convinced those plastic undercarriage legs are going to be sufficient because this is turning into quite a weighty old thing now. So we shall see. Um, so I've got some parts here you can see if you remember back in part one if you didn't watch it go and have a look what we did we went through the instructions and we made up a load of sub assemblies you can see them here and I generally do this with kits looking at parts you know like here we have a couple of engine casing halves so here we've got you know two halves going together we've got a seam to deal with if you do it up front you can deal with the seam when you need to when you need the part and when the glue's all dry and everything. Otherwise, you come to that section, you glue those two parts together. You want to get on with the model, you have to wait for them to dry. So you probably leave them for like an hour, then you deal with the seam, and then a week later, the seam's back because of the shrinkage and everything. So that's what I do. I go through and parts like this, glue them together, and then I've just sanded out that seam. No misses service or no filler, no nothing. Just sand out the seam, and it should pretty much stay away because, you know, because it's been, what is it? It's about, it's about two weeks, I think, since I did this. It's today. It's Friday, the tenth of March, 
um, and I got this when did I get this this was like Saturday the what's tomorrow the 11th so I got this on like the 26th of February whatever it was the Saturday and I started it straight away so there we go um, right so here we have our instructions <laughs> as you can see so I'm basically looking at parts we can be getting on with now I've done the I previously did the the tail rotor shaft in part one and then since then I've gone on and actually attached it all into the gearbox and then dealt with the seam on the gearbox so that's now ready to drop onto the back there so we'll be fitting that and its bits and pieces um, and I think it's going to be easier to do that before we put the front on because otherwise we've got all the weight of the front and everything getting in the way so I'll probably do that soon um, we've also got bits and pieces to go on there and greeblies um, we've got this little piece here that took that support to go on there once I've dealt with that seam on the top uh, but working forward it's telling us to fit the undercarriage legs and everything which we haven't done we're not doing and then there's all this little fine pipe look and that to go in which I haven't done yet because I haven't dealt with the seams so I'm just looking just to finish this video off I'm going to chuck the parts all over the floor I'm going to look at the rotor head here so I've got some parts off the sprues and I've knocked them on the floor and hopefully that's the only one that went down one of the beauties of filming is when you do that when you flick parts around you can watch the film back at like 25% speed and you can see the direction the parts go in and I've done that a couple of times so um, in the instructions it's telling us to glue those two halves together which we've done and then it's telling us to put these end plates on um, and here it looks like this is like a disc brake part D29 so um, we shall see how it goes together now we can see that we have two different sides here we have one side with ribs and we have one side with a cutout for some sort of transmission so we're working with this size with the veins facing forward so we've got the veins facing forward so it's telling me to fit this part here now I'm just wondering about the engineering of this kit can you build it wrong it will physically fit but you'll be putting it upside down so nice bit of engineering there as good as they could do it they could have perhaps put two tabs on one and one tab on the other um, but then you could still could have fitted the one tab part into the two tab side so whatever um, so I'm gonna put some extra thin on here just run that round that's a very nice fit on there so we end up with that sort of lovely sharp line if you like that will make it look like it's actually bolted on although it may be a part of the casting looking at that we'll have to have a look our references I may have to get rid of that seam we will see um, so that's going on there and then we've got this disc brake type thing which I'm sure it is I'm sure it's a disc brake so they can lock the the rotor head when it's parked so that's going to go in there I'm just going to put a drop in under there there we go so that's gone on there like so so that's like a like I said like a disc brake you can see looks very nice indeed Obviously we can paint that up, but we're not going to make it all, we could probably have a little bit of rust on there actually, because I doubt if it ever gets used like a disc brake on a car, it's more like a handbrake or a parking brake in the USA. Um, and there's another part which I've probably flicked on the floor then. So let me see if I can find that. Nope, it was over here. It was just there. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Right. So we can fit this one on this side. I've already sanded all the the faces and everything, the end faces. So that's going like that. And that's where the main input shafts are going to go from the engines, I believe. So that's those on there. Lovely. Right. So that's step 84 done. So we can cross them off. Now we can move on to step 85, we're going to fit the main base and then the upper tower. So the main base, we've got a piece on there and a, a gap in there that's going to go into. So that can go in like that. We can just brush some extra thin round. Plenty into there because it's going to be hidden underneath the gearbox. We don't need to worry about damaging any detail. As long as you brush it quickly and you don't hang around, 
you'll have no issues whatsoever. You just make sure because this is going to be a crucial area where we don't want it to split. There we go. So that's that done there. And then we've got this piece here going on the top. This is D3. That's got a semicircular tab on it that will align. Okay, so that's going to sink down in there. Okay, so that actually goes down into a recess and it doesn't want to stay in because there is some plastic debris around the edge where I've sanded it. So we'll just remove that. And what we'll do, we'll go around with some extra thin to remove any shards of plastic or any burring that's there. Okay, what I'm going to do is put some extra thin in because it's a very nice snug fit. And if you've got a nice snug fit, you probably won't get any capillary action going on. Again, this is part of the main rotor head, so it needs to be fairly rigid so I'll get some glue into there there we go there we are that's that all done then we've got F52 going on and it's going to go this way up and you'll notice there's a little pip on there that's going to go into that little hole in there. And on mine I had a secondary pip, which I had to remove. And I can see this just to witness if it's still there. So make sure that's not there on yours because it'll affect the angle this sits at. So that's just going to sit on there like that, engage with that pip. So again, I'm going to put some extra thin. We may as well put it on this face here. Very unlike me to pre-glue stuff. I've done it twice now on the same part. And this is one of the reasons why you've got to be so quick. Now I can get in there. Get that welded in. So there we are, there's our main rotor. And as you can see, when it goes on, it sits at an angle. You can see there it sits at an angle, it's not straight, it's not 90 degrees to the um, to the actual helicopter. It's very difficult to show you because it's so long, but it's actually leaning over as you're looking in the picture there, it's leaning over this way, and that is done to counteract the torque from the tail rotor. Apparently, the tail rotor. The force of the tail rotor turning the aircraft also has the effect of tipping. So the tail rotor will tip, whichever way it's going, it will tip the, um, the fuselage over. So they actually put this on an angle to counteract that torque. It's one of the problems. Another kit I've got, which isn't on the shelf behind me, is the Trumpeter MI-24, is it? The, um, the beautiful thing, that Russian attack helicopter. Um, <clears throat> And one of the one of the problems with the trumpeter kit when you look at it, it's dead vertical. It should it should be tipped over. You can see it when you look at it front on pictures. It's got quite an angle on it. And what some people do is actually cut the cockpit and tip the cockpit over so it looks right. But um, I don't think I'll be bothering with that when I build mine. But uh, there we go. So that's our tail rotor part. Now moving on here, looking again at this rear end, um, we've got this transfer box here which takes the power from that shaft running along the tail up to the tail rotor. So I'm going to just finish that off because we did this in part one. So I've got that, cleaned the seams up, and now we're going to add F2 and F3. So F2 is this part here. Again, we've got all these joints all sanded and we've got a tab on there to locate it. So again, we've got a lovely joint on there. I'm just going to sand a bit more off of there because we've got a little bit of a step going on. There we go. So I'm just going to go round 
here. There we are. So that's that one done. And then we've got this little bottom part here. So we'll go in there with some glue and we'll just come around the front here. So that's that all assembled as well. So we've got that gearbox done now. So we can cross some bits off. Cross them off, cross that off, cross that off. And that's going to fit into a bracket here, G66. That's going to kind of fit into the tail area. Round about here, round about this hole. It's going to go into that hole actually. Like so. And it's going to take power from that shaft up to the tail rower. So it's all exposed at the back. So as you can see, it's going to look awesome. And when we come to building one with all the super detailing, we'll be adding all the cabling and everything that's around that. It's, this thing is covered in cables and lines and everything, so it'll look amazing. And a lot of it is actually included in the kit, so uh, that's really good. So, there we go. Um, I didn't cross those parts off on the tail rotor head, did I? So we can cross those off. And this is a good good advice if you are darting around in the, in the build sequence like I tend to do. It's a good idea to cross things off because that way when you come to it, you know you've done it. And you can quickly look back through and see if there's bits you've missed. Another thing I do, like you can see here, G104, I've put a red cross on there, which isn't very dark at all, is it? So we'll put a bigger red cross on there. So I know that's a part I've missed off. And I'll remember them because I've put a red cross on it. But um, there we go. So I am going to call that a day because I think I'm about an over an hour, just over an hour. So we'll call that a day for part five. Hope you've enjoyed it. We haven't got a hell of a lot done, but I hope you've learned a bit from it. It's a lot of the stuff I do is try, tr try and translate to other kits as well. Um, and now we can actually, because we've got all this main superstructure bit done, we can actually move on now with the build and, and do bits like this and get our reblies and bits and pieces done. But you can see this thing's going to be massive. I mean, the, that tail rotor head is huge. It's, um, you can see how big it is. You'll probably see the angle better if I put it that way as well. You can see how it's tipped over to the side. There. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. And I will see you all soon um, with part six. In the meantime, I'll probably get a few more bits and, bits and pieces done. And uh, really looking forward to getting on with the engines actually. So uh, see you soon. Bye for now.